Hello, lovers, and welcome to Heart to Heart, the Living Spiritfully podcast. I am your host, Paul Galoro, and it is my honor to have you here listening to this special episode today. Now, this podcast began um, kind of out of a, uh, an interesting request that came in from my very first guest, Umal Kiram Petrawala. Uh, and she had uh, uh, sent me a message saying, hey, Paul, I, I'm, Spirit is, is speaking to me saying, please um, share your voice. And she goes, I'm wondering if you're willing to have this conversation with me and if you have a platform where we can have this convo. And I had been thinking about it for many years to have a podcast. And really, I just wanted the podcast to be about love. I wanted it to show how love shows up in the world in many different ways. And so when she reached out to me saying, you know, do you have this platform? I'm like, oh, no, I don't. But I, I said to her, I was like, listen, I don't have a platform, but I'm willing to make one. Because when she had said to me, spirit is asking me to use my voice. And then she had come to me saying, do you have this platform? I took that as spirit was asking me through her to create this platform. And um, my knees were shaking, my hands were trembling, my voice was a little shaky, and uh, I said yes. Um, and then Umal and I met um, on the Zoom, as one does in the middle of a pandemic, and uh, we just had a, a conversation. And I said yes, okay, this is this is we'll do this. So we set it up to make it a little bit more um, formal. And I had uh, taken that time to just. Um, sit down and think, okay, well, what do I want this whole podcast to look like? And within minutes, I had written it out. And like, let's be honest, the format, when you've listened to it, it's not that complex, but just the ideas and the guests that I wanted and, and the messages that I wanted it to share um, and deliver, they, it just all sort of like came into me and came out on paper. And then that's how a heart, heart to Heart, the Living Spiritfully podcast was born. Um, and... I have to be honest, though, it wasn't easy for me to do this. You know, Umal had come to me in June and, you know, this is now three or four, no, March, April, May, June. This is three months into the pandemic. The very beginning of the pandemic was, and listen, I know that I'm not saying anything new and shocking, right? I understand that everybody was going through the exact same thing that I was going through in terms of the the intensity and the sadness and the 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 fear that surrounded this entire thing right i remember um that first like when we were shut down um i didn't know what to do it was a tuesday i had uh, i i think i was supposed to teach or i did teach i can't remember i drove home and then everything was like shut down after that and the next day I didn't know what to do, so I, I, I canceled all non-essential services of my own, meaning if it wasn't a client and not an urgent family member situation, it wasn't happening. Any plans that I had with friends, canceled, and I shut myself in my bedroom and I cried. I cried all day Wednesday, I cried all day Thursday, I cried all day Friday, I cried all day Saturday. And then Sunday I came out of this fog and it said, okay, this is what you got to do. And I had known in that moment how to serve. And I remember that week I had decided to um, do a, a dance party on Facebook. I don't know if anybody remembered that soul shining dance party. It was 30 minutes. Uh, and then also to offer these daily meditations. And that helped me. But then I felt the need to stop. It just became too much for me. And... Um, as the the time progressed and i i was i was seeing clients i was doing some online meditation stuff um it just got harder and harder if i wasn't working i was just not in a good space um and so when umal came to me i took it as an opportunity to come out of that fog that i was in because for that hour and a half that i was conducting these conversations with people plus all the time it took to edit and upload, et cetera, it pulled me out of that space and it gave me something to do. And I don't know how I did it, but it just happened. And I honestly think it was the grace of God that was like pulsing through me 
um, getting me through this. And um, so, yeah, it, it, it was just a, a wonderful experience for me. Now, 2020 as a whole, and again, I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here. I'm just sharing my experience. I found it to be very revealing. Revealing in so many ways. On Like in the macrocosm, it revealed all the social injustices that we see in the world. You know, we had um, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter come through. We have all the ways that, um, all the ways that it was revealed to us how the structures that have been set in place have been set in place for a small particular set of people and none of us, none of us having this conversation were, um, it, it wasn't, this, this system wasn't created to benefit any of us, right? It, it, it didn't matter, you know, I, definitely those uh, BIPOC, um, Black, Indigenous, people of color, um, uh, uh, queer, trans, the whole spectrum of that segment of the population was definitely um, affected and was definitely not included in the way the system was created, but it also wasn't created for the everyday person. And that was really prevalent. So 2020 for me and my perspective of it really revealed a lot of this stuff. At the microcosm though, at the individual level, and I can only speak from my experience, I, it revealed to me a lot, a lot about myself, a lot about the life that I had set up for myself up into that point. It revealed um, the essence of the relationships that I had in my life, the relationship with my family, the relationship with my friends, the relationships with colleagues, the relationships that I had with food, the relationship that I had with sleep, the relationship that I had with, with um, my vices, with everything. It was very revealing and one, I, okay, so I didn't think I was going to talk about this, but here I am now talking about it. It's, it's wanting its way to come out. But it really revealed to me relationships that I had put so much faith and trust into. Um, and it revealed to me how those friendships, partnerships, whatever they were, weren't... How can I put this? They were more transactional than relational. And what I mean by that is... I was, I, I thought I was in a relational relationship with somebody, meaning I'm here to serve you, you're here to serve me. But what I discovered was they were in this friendship, this relationship to serve themselves. I was simply there to serve them, to give them what they wanted, when they wanted it. And it left me not only heartbroken, not only exhausted, um, but one in particular left me very confused, very, um, we'll just leave it at that. And um, it was heartbreaking. That was also part of this like, oh my gosh, I have just been, like I'd been manipulated for over a decade with this one friendship in particular that how do I now go out and function in the world with other people? I talked about this a lot in my, 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 um, in the podcast and in, in some of the conversations that I had, I had skipped town <laughs> in 2018. I sold my car, packed up my apartment, left my stuff with my parents and I went to go travel the world. Um, and uh, it's interesting because someone that's here present today, she had sent me a message and she said, hey, you know, when you went to Italy, were you running away? And if you had asked me that question in 2018 when I did it, I wouldn't say that I was running away. I would say that, no, I was going out to experience. I needed a change in life. I wanted to see the world. I love Italy. I'm going to spend most of my time there. But upon reflection, I was in fact running away. I was running away from the relationships that I found myself in that I couldn't get out of. I found myself running away from all of the things that I could not say. The things that I had to say, like my body, my spirit, the universe was saying, girl, 
Speak your truth. Stand up for yourself. Don't take that kind of shit anymore. And I didn't know how to do that. So I just figured, well, why don't I just uproot my life and travel the world for three months? <laughs> the thing is, if you've, ever, if you've never done that and you're thinking about doing something like that, let me just share my experience. No matter how far you run, doesn't matter what side of the Atlantic Ocean you're on, doesn't matter which hemisphere you're in, the things that you're running from will find a way to you no matter what. So now I'm in Italy, then I'm in Thailand, then I'm in Australia, and all of the things that I thought I left behind in Canada, Toronto specifically, had shown up not in the actual person or experience that I was running away from, but in different forms. And this is, and this is something that has come up in my spiritual practice, this idea of it's not about form, it's content. So yeah, I thought I was running away from uh, a job, a, a, a company that I was working with that uh, I didn't feel fit anymore. But then I get to the other side of the planet and those issues showed up in other relationships with new people that I'd never met before, right? Um, uh, uh, friendships that didn't work out in Toronto. I then go make new friends in Florence and some of them had those same kind of qualities. So again, it's not about form, it's content. I never dealt with the content, which is just an energy of some sort. So it showed up in another place. And I kept on attracting these people into my life. Not these people, these experiences that came up through the different people that I had met. So after those three months, I come back and um, I don't know who the hell I am. I realize all of this stuff. I realize uh, who I am, my upbringing. I realize just a lot of stuff. And I honestly have no idea how to interact with the world. Luckily, though, I had that experience and it wasn't in the middle of a pandemic because I came back. It was summertime. Uh, I, I worked a little bit and then I went to the beach and I got high all the other days that I wasn't working. And it served me. It, it truly it served me in those moments. But I had started to learn, you know, then I go back to Italy in September to run my retreat. This is 2018 I'm talking about still. And um, I navigate this now. So, okay, I go, I learn all of this stuff. I don't know who I am. I don't know how to interact with the outside world because I feel like a different person, but everybody else around me is expecting that old me. So then 20, 2020 rolls around. And again, the same thing happens. All of these friendships I thought I have had, I realized were never, they weren't real. It wasn't, it wasn't true. It, 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 what I thought in my mind and in my heart wasn't the truth of the matter. And so that fucked me up. That, re that fucked me up more. And I'm sorry that, well, no, I'm not sorry that I'm using this word. It's a word that I use. Um, it fucked me up. And I had to, again, I, luckily I had the 2018 experience because it's like I had the tools, maybe forgot how to use them or I had to figure out how to use them now with this layer of pandemic. But it, it gave me that opportunity to, um, or, or, or I had the tools to, to, to sort of get through it. The change this time, though, was now I was feeling a little bit more confident and a little bit more, a little bit less shaky. I was still shaky, don't get me wrong, but a little bit less shaky to um, be able to go and speak up. This one uh, friend... I use this word loosely, friend. this one transactional uh, situation that I found myself in, cut it off without any problem. And so I've transitioned friendships and relationships many times, always for myself with the intention of uh, it, uncoupling. For example, I was in a relationship at the beginning of the year through the pandemic. We've amicably now split this in September. We just realized in the way that we were set up, we didn't serve each other greatly in that way. We're still loving towards one another just from apart. That's always been my intention. 
But this one in particular, I couldn't still have them in my life. I had to cut them out completely because this happened. Well, I'm not going to get into details, but they had called me and said, well, you say you're all about love, so prove yourself. Dramatic pause for a reason. First of all, love doesn't need to prove itself. If I'm coming from my heart and I'm telling you, we're not meant to be in each other's lives because uh, I don't feel good and I don't want to transfer that over to you in any way, shape or form. That to me is being loving. And uh, if you question that and you want me to prove it, first of all, sometimes love says no. The love in my heart for who I am had to say no to this particular individual. And if you don't like that, you're coming from your ego. That's not, don't, don't throw that shit on me. Um, anyways, I then started to be a lot more verbal in my conversations in, in my, my, my relationships, not from a place of anger and like, oh, you know, I was taken advantage of before. I'm not going to let that happen again, but it was more from a place of, I got my back. That, that part of me that, that was um, not looked out for, didn't have someone to look out for him, I'm going to now look out for that part of me. And that part of me is saying no more to that. Um, so that was ultra revealing for me. It also revealed to me a lot of things that I was programmed to believe about myself, like who I am meant to be in relationship, in romantic relationship especially who I am to be in my family relationship, who I am to be in my friend relationships, who I am to be in my um, relationships with, you know, bosses, etc. It revealed a lot of, of that to me. I had been programmed to believe that I was to be small. I was to be at everyone else's beck and call, even if that meant... Um, even if that meant sacrificing my self, but not sacrificing my joy. Yeah. And uh, I learned that I actually don't have to do that. Not that I learned. I remembered because that's the truth of who I am. That's the truth of who we all are. And I'm only sharing my story with you. If there's something that is reflected for you, I'm hoping that it does serve you. But um, yeah, none of us are meant to be here to sacrifice our joy for another person. I love to serve. I love to be of service to others. It brings me joy. But when I'm forced to, when I'm manipulated to, when I'm demanded to, when I can't or when I physically am unable, that's not healthy. Um, so that was another thing that it revealed to me, who I am in relationship. And um, that was a, a big thing for me because it now sets the tone. So I've been able to, in long friendships that I've had, I've been able to have conversations where things may not have been working. I'm, I was able to have conversations and you know, the love in our hearts allowed us to to make changes so that it is beneficial for all parties involved where it could and we could continue that relationship where it couldn't continue or where it had to change form um, I was able to and again done in a way that came from the heart um, so that was that was really what 2020 had revealed to me um, Another thing that it revealed to me, and there's a, a, a line in a song by Donna Delory. She says, your paradise is right in front of you. And another thing that 2020, and this is, you know, I, I didn't really understand. I understood to a certain degree, but didn't really understand people that were just like, no, shelter in place. I don't want to. I got to go out. I got to be doing things, which totally, don't get me wrong. I miss, you know, just going out to have dinner with friends at a restaurant. I miss, you know, going to see live shows. I miss 
walking into the mall without a care. You know what I mean? I miss those sort of things. Don't get me wrong. Um, but um, what 2020 really um, forced me, I wouldn't even say encouraged because I had no choice. It was to really come home to myself and be in a place with my family that I've run away from my entire life. And it brought me to a place where I see life with new eyes. I see relationship with new eyes. I see my family interaction with new eyes that I see my place in it. And I see that all that stuff that I had run around the world to find and discover has literally been in front of me and within me this entire time. And listen, my family relationship isn't perfect but we are definitely in a more harmonious place than we've ever been. And that's because 2020 had asked me to sit down, get my shit together, look at all the ways that I was not in alignment with the truth of who I am and take the steps to get there. So um, it was pretty, uh, it's, it's been a, a, a wonderful journey. Um, now I just, you know, going back to the podcast and how all of these people served me, all of these conversations served me. I did some journaling before this and a lot of stuff just like poured out of me. I cried a bit and I was like, okay, cry now. So then you don't cry on, on camera, which let's be honest, if I cried on camera, I wouldn't bother me. But I took a moment to reflect on what each of the conversations that I had with the 12 hearts that I spoke to over the course of these six months. Um, and Umal reminded me that I am here to serve and I am here to be of service to the world. Uh, and what also came out of that is, like I said already, is to be of service in a way that also serves me. You know, um, in A Course in Miracles, we say that love is the only thing that sort of that defies the laws of physics because with love, when you give it, it benefits not only the giver, but the receiver. But we've also been trained to believe that in order to give, you have to sacrifice. But love would never ask you to sacrifice because love is joy. You want to be joyful doing the thing that you want to do. The, the way that you serve and also the person that is receiving the service will amplify their joy as well. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that Umal reminded me. She's like, you're here to serve. Asata. Oh, what a bright light. She was episode two and she reminded me that joy is my essence. I know this already. <laughs> I've... I know that joy is my divine right, but that conversation that I had with Asata reminded me of that and imprinted it in my heart. That's the part that I guess was missing and, and allowed me to forget. She imprinted it in my heart. And just to share a little bit more, I was really hesitant to reach out to Asata. I've known her for years, like I said, in, like we said in the podcast, but um, without getting into too much detail, I wasn't, I don't know. I just, I created a story in my mind that she, okay, whatever, whatever. This is a decade ago. Anyway, I had dated somebody that we both knew. And when it ended, I sort of felt as though I lost certain friends in the divorce, as they say. Um, and I thought she was one of them. And so I had expressed that to her and she's like, never like you always have a special place in my heart. And she made me realize that our hearts are big enough to include everybody in them at all times. So that was really special to me. I might edit this out for the, um, <laughs> the recording Jason. Oh man. And now Jason and I, we, we're tight. And so we've had many heart to heart since then. And um, he reminded me that it is important to love all aspects of myself, all aspects of myself. And Jason does beautiful drag. And I love when he does this because he's 
pulling out, he's highlighting and dressing up a part of himself when 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 he's going out and performing as his drag persona. At least that's my my perception of it. And uh, um, yeah, that was that was pretty special for me. Um, and he reminded me that it's important to love all aspects of myself. Roxy reminded me of the importance of being in right relationship with our body and not just doing the things to our body that we're told to do. Sometimes they're not beneficial for us. Michelle, she reminded me the importance to lead with the heart. Junius, again, reminded me that not only am I here to serve, but we are all here to serve each other. And his pain became the way that he served others. And so my pain is now the way that I serve others. Claudia, she reminded me that we have to reconcile our past in order to be harmonious and peaceful in our present, to have a joyful and prosperous and abundant future. Catherine reminded me of the importance to live in harmony with the earth. And thanks to Catherine, I now have over 40 plants in my home and counting. I'm so excited for the spring. Crystal, mm, Crystal reminded me of the importance of death and pleasure. And those are two things that I've been very intimate with, especially in the last decade of my life. And um, I just loved that I could speak to her about that. Beth, reminded me the importance of cultivating a vitality practice for our body, our mind, and our spirit. And to take it a little step further, leading with spirit. You know, sometimes we think, okay, mind first, mind, body, spirit. We always talk about that, our uh, mind, body, soul, the trifecta of wellness. I believe in leading with spirit. Heather, that darkness can be cozy. We just can't live there. It's okay to have those moments where we are uh, standing in our shadow, where we are speaking from, well, not speaking, but we are just in that shadow space for a moment. It's okay to be there. We just don't want to live there. And Derek, the, the last episode that I aired, uh, that I launched last week, Derek reminded me that um, it's important to vibe high Stick to your guns and always follow your heart, even if it goes against the popular way of thinking. Um, and that was just very beautiful to me. So um, that was my journey of Heart to Heart, the Living Spiritfully podcast. Um, I know that it will continue to, to, to reveal more stuff to me. Um, and there is definitely more to come, but for now, this is this is where I'm at. Um, so, I don't know. I just said a bunch of words. <laughs> and on that note, in the typical heart to heart fashion, what I always like to do is at the end of the of the conversation is ask a few rapid fire questions. So I'm going to um, leave it out up to you. I just said a bunch of stuff. Please. Put your questions in the comments if you're willing to ask anything. One, some of the questions that I usually ask is, what makes your heart sing? And I'm going to tell you something. What's making my heart sing these days I'm, is you know, analog pastimes. And here's what I mean by that. Tending to my flowers and my plants. Um, like I said, I have 40 of them all around my house. Refinishing furniture. My parents have a lot of old furniture in their in 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 their cottage, and so I'm taking it and I'm ref I'm refinishing it. I'm stripping it down. I'm painting it. I'll share some of that with you um, as I have more images of that. Uh, and listening to records. You've heard me talk about it, especially in my conversation with Derek, the last episode, episode 12. I'm just loving this analog life. So I'm trying to limit my digital because, you know, I do stuff on Skype or Skype. What is this? Early 2000s. I do stuff on Zoom all the time. I was teaching on Zoom. Um, and so I need that those analog pastimes. I'm looking for a used sewing machine because I want to learn how to sew uh, and possibly even knit. So I'm just going to put that 
out there. You still making kombucha? I have not made kombucha in a while. Uh, I don't have a scoby. Once I traveled the world, my scobies died, and I um, never had. I, I didn't get them replenished. So what is one non-negotiable that you move forward with no matter what? You know, there are many, and the most important for me is that uh, I got to be heart-centered, and the relationships that I'm in have to be heart-centered. That is a non-negotiable. Um, now, heart-centered doesn't mean love and light all the time. You know, sometimes heart-centered means... We have to sit down and have a very uncomfortable posi uh, position. <laughs> That's something else. Uh, we have to sit down and have a very uncomfortable conversation. And you can't run and I can't run. We need to um, address this. There may be a moment where we have to pause the conversation, um, but that is a non-negotiable for me. It's not always about light and love. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about that because, um, yeah, as I mentioned, sometimes we got to sit in that darkness. Um, you know, I've been accused many times of spiritually bypassing things. And I think there is a way that you can be optimistic uh, and come from a place of love and joy, even in those uncomfortable moments. Share a podcast I like. I can't think of one. Oh, yes. Ologies. Look up ologies. What's my greatest takeaway from my 2020 journey? Oh man, Lily, you always, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest here. I'm very, I don't know if uncomfortable is the word to answer that question but when you when I read your question what came to mind is that I'm a lot I'm a lot bigger and p more powerful than I give myself credit for that's my biggest takeaway of 2020 and I don't know how to uh I don't have the correct language. This isn't the word that I want to use, but I'm worth more than I give myself credit for. And I was very uncomfortable saying that because I was scared that it was going to sound egotistical and boastful, but um, I've diminished myself so much and it was so painful for so long and for all the wrong reasons and for all the wrong people that... Um, I'm no longer doing that. So that's my biggest takeaway from 2020. Thank you for asking that question, Lily. Oh. And as I say that, lovers, I don't mean just me. I mean we all are. We are all bigger and 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 greater than we give ourselves credit for. Are there any other questions? All right. I think we will put a pin in it for now. One of the other things that I learned about myself is I don't know how to just stop and take in the moment and the accomplishments. Um, like after I had uh, released the last uh, episode, I had messaged a, a friend of mine and I said, oh my God, I can't believe I have a podcast with 12 episodes floating out in the world. I was like, why doesn't that like compute? And how come I don't feel like, what's that supposed to, feel? what does accomplishment feel like? I don't know. Not that I haven't accomplished, I've accomplished many things, many amazing things, but I don't know how to feel it. So anyways, I just want to share a few things. There have been over 2000 plays of the um, Heart to Heart Living Spiritfully podcast. That's 1,999 more than I thought would ever happen, um, which is pretty cool. And there was listeners, and this I only know from the background of, of where I upload this. We had listeners from the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Lithuania, and Singapore. That just blows my mind. Um, so I just, I wanted to celebrate that because that was pretty, pretty cool for me. And I also learned how to, um, well... I knew how to do it sort of from my past life in radio and television, but I learned how to, to 
produce a podcast. And little um, spoiler alert, uh, there is another amazing podcast that I'm currently in production um, of doing um, that will be out in January. I'm super excited. Well, January or February, we haven't really set the date yet, but I'm working with someone else. Um, I'm super excited for it. And Heart to Heart is just on a brief hiatus while we work on that, but it definitely will be back. Um, for a second season um, with some other surprises and I'm I'm okay I'm gonna put this out here and, and Amanda you're on this so I <laughs> I'm not saying that you have to but I know you're going to hold me accountable to this um, I'm gonna do some pretty big scary things and ask some some in my eyes big guests to be on the show so i'm super super excited and i hope you'll all be on that journey with me uh, i want to say a wholehearted thank you to everyone that has listened to this podcast thank you to everyone that has joined me here live tonight i just want to say from the entirety of my not only my heart but the entirety of my being Thank you so much for being here. For everyone that has listened, you're the reason why I kept going because there was many, many moments that I wanted to just pack it all in, not just the podcast, but like everything that I'm doing in life. And just the the messages that um, that that you have sent me, you know, so, some of you replied to the email that I sent yesterday. Some of you sent me random messages out of nowhere just to say hi. Uh, and that means the world to me. So thank you all so much for your presence, for shining your light um, in all those moments that I forgot to shine mine and forgot that I was, that I had a light and that I am a light. So thank you so much for that. This is it for season one of Heart to Heart, the Living Spiritfully podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and I hope that it revealed something to you, even the slightest thing. Um, this, as much as it was for me, it was also for you, the listener. So thank you so very much. Um, I don't know what else to say except I love you. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you hopefully in the Living Spiritfully Collective Facebook group. Look out for um, the announcement of the 2021 podcast that I'm working on, plus season two of Heart to Heart, um, and a lot of other things that are coming down the line. So thank you so much. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.